Well, the understanding stayed with me. The idea that death, okay, what's going to happen at death is Stephen, you know, in all his particular memories, his all his wonderful uniqueness that I'm so attached to, he's so attached to, this organism is attached to, yes, well, that is most likely going to simply vanish, except for in the effects I've had on other people and the works that I have created in some way that have passed on and continue in the, you know, greater thread of being of our involvement as humans. But what am I going, what's going to happen to the real me, the I, I'm going to continue to be what I was before. I was Stephen, of course, and always will be. What else could happen? So that seems hardly a tragedy. It seems like, well, now for what's next? What's of the infinite possibilities that are being presented? So it gives a change in attitude about what is death and what is the meaning of it. And I'm not saying that, that my organism has no, my, what I call me, has no uh, fear of death in that way. And of course, you know, I have attachments, I've got things I'm not done with, I'm not finished and all. But the concept of the annihilation of the individuality isn't frightening in the way it was when I thought, that's all I am. That will simply cease to be and that's it. Whereas I see that we all have immortality already. It's not something we can get. It's not something you know, we can avoid. It's what is. That's what it is to be I. I am. So it's, it, it changed my life attitude. But, and this is an example of a, what happened. A lucid dream is sort of deliberately chosen by, for example, the renunciation of saying, uh, rather than the, the uh, dream sex kind of scenario, which I've done before, that's not what I want. I want something else, something beyond. So that was a renunciation, I think, that was important to the dynamic, because the rest of what happened was not decided. It just occurred. It just happened. I just, it flew up. This just happened. And I found myself in this place as peeling away all the layers of the things that change that our biological organisms are designed to see. That's what we've evolved to see is the things that change. Those are the things that could kill us, not the things that stay the same. The things that always are and things that always have been are, of course, still here present right now, the source of being. Where else would it be? But we, it's exactly what we can't see with our biological eyes. Yet we can see them in a sense, with another sense of seeing, as the dream showed me. So the, it, it's, it's like there's a wonderful uh, little say, you know, about uh, when uh, at the beginning that all was dark and, and, and void and nothing was at all, and God said, let there be light. You know, well, so uh, there still was nothing, but you could see it better. <laughs> And that's what was happening. So I was being able to somehow see this nothing. It wasn't that uh, nothing that of conventional thought of the boring nothing, <laughs> but instead a very interesting nothing indeed, the nothing that is everything. So uh, the dreams of death can change people's view of, of how to live and, and provide a context. And, that, and this is one answer to the question of why can something that never changes make a difference to people? Right? Because if it doesn't change, what effect can? And the answer is it can change their context, their understanding of how to live and what matters and by their awareness of this thing that always is. And so that seems to change, certainly our, our consciousness of the existence of the one thing that is does vary and that can change behavior. So that's the connection right there. We don't need lucidity for it. There are other ways of going about it. I mean, it's uh, when I was um, maybe 21, I had a, a non-lucid dream that was very powerful and relevant to, to death. And, and this was, I was um, crawling up, first of all, walking up a mountain road, and I'm, I started to feel lead in my legs. You know, this dream sometimes happens that you can barely move, and you can, Usually when you're running away from something that you can't really run, your feet seem to be paralyzed. And that sense of paralysis spread up my body. It's sort of like Socrates and the hemlock, and it was spreading up my body. And I had the sensation, suddenly the clear perspective. This is the end. 
I'm about to just die of this exhaustion, whatever it is, this paralysis, this is it. My very last moment. What am I going to do? And somehow the thought occurred to me, total acceptance. And I let out my last breath and a rainbow came out of my heart. That's what I woke up with. And it was simply the, I, the thought of acceptance at that moment. It was a, what can I do? I can embrace what is, which is the last expiration I've got. <laughs> there it goes. But embrace it. And that uh, symbolically showed as a rainbow, which told me at that point uh, that death is not what we fear it to be. It was like that, you know, biblical sign after the flood idea, the image of, of a hopeful transformation that you may not have expected. But for that dream to have worked the way it did, I needed not to be lucid, right? I needed not to know it was a dream because then I would say, oh yes, here I'm having a dream in which uh, my dream body thinks it's about to die. But no, I really believe I was about to die. This is it. What am I going to do? So there are ways, and it's a balance that, that there are cases where lucidity is extremely useful and cases where it's better not to know. And so uh, for my personal practice, uh, years ago I arrived at a simple formula, which is to say, I want to realize when I'm dreaming whenever it's wise. So I'll leave my unconscious mind to tell me here's a good opportunity to notice it's a dream and to do something different from what you're doing because it usually is sort of going wrong and making a mistake and then running away from something, a chance to reorient, to, to get things right. So it's a, once you've got the skill and practiced enough that it's available when you need it, then that seems an appropriate use.